he also currently sits the board on the board of Petroleum Institute of East Africa. He chairs um, the Shevo board and is a patron of the Christian business professionals. Um, he's also the ex um, professionals fellowship, ex school of Petroleum Fellowship. Um, we'd like to welcome Thank you. John. Thank you. Ganga. I know you've been in the room for most of the session. Um, sorry for taking your time. And so we don't want to waste any more time. We would um, now hand over to you. So thank you very much and um, welcome. Thank you very much. I have the next one hour to do something that normally takes four hours. So uh, we'll just highlight. Um, let me say, we like I've been hearing, clearly, Kenya and Nigeria share a lot of things. One of the things I'm hearing is that corruption is rife. And that corruption is the type that can remove certain people who are not corrupt, and they may even get themselves threatened and in danger. But that, and importantly, is that the good people of Nigeria have not given up. They say that um, the evil people only succeed when the good ones do nothing. And this band of pe people, um, maybe a little younger than me, I'm 70 this year, uh, is committed to the roar of the lion to see change in Africa, starting with Nigeria. I've been at it for quite a number of years, and I've written a book which you can find in Amazon. My book is entitled Integrity, the Litmus Test of Good Leadership. Integrity, the Litmus Test of Good Leadership, which is selling the idea that of integrity being critical to the leadership of Africa, if Africa is going to uh, be of any use to the rest of the world. Our subject today um, is one of the many e things that you require to be a transmissional leader. What our sister was saying is one of them. I'm going to the next one, which he already mentioned, that I want to say right at the introduction if you want to be a leader of influence who is taking people from what they are used to, what's commonly called the comfort zone, to a better place which they know nothing about or do not even think is possible to go to, what they require is trust. Because unless they trust you, they don't see why they should be taking risks. And so the emphasis tonight is that you can you should give up on on bringing transformation in Nigeria unless you become somebody willing to have the kind of character that will make you t people trust you such that when you tell them to jump what you ask is how high could they know your intentions are okay and that they are not selfish in nature they are meant for the good of the whole, whole group, for the good of Nigeria or Kenya, wherever you are. That's really what is our discussion, our discussion today. And it will be important that, um, that we, in a few minutes we, we have, we actually, we actually spend time and um, hopefully, hopefully say a few, a few things that will help you. Um, can you see my slides? Somebody reply me. You, you are able to see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay. So we are discussing pursuing personal and public integrity as a prerequisite to being a man or a woman of influence so influential that you will convince people to stop what is uncomfortable what sometimes they don't like it, but they regard it that's the way we are in Nigeria, to the vision of a better country, and they trust you enough to work with you. For that to happen, 
you require several things. Character is one only one of them. You require more than you require more than more than that one. Character is the foundation of transformational leadership. Like I'm like I'm saying. But I want us to start with a, with an exercise. And uh, we are going to break into into groups. I learned a long time ago that uh, adults don't want to listen. They want to participate in their training. And so instead of me talking all the time, I would like us to talk to each other. So I'm asking, I'm asking that we split into groups. And once you are in your group, appoint a leader who will come back and uh, give us a report to the whole group. The first question you want to give us is, give us an example of a leader you have interacted with. Whom you regard as your best example. Don't give us, don't give us um, some international name which you don't know about. Give us the name of a leader whom you know at a personal level. Even if it's just your mother or your father. It has to be somebody you can answer questions about. Give an example of a leader you have interacted with. Whom you regard as your best example. Once you give us, you don't have to give us a name, give us a title maybe. Then tell us what is the evidence that was a great leader. What is it? Because we are trying to learn, according to you, how does a great leader look like? The second question is for us to give us an example of a bad leader. And then again, once you tell us he's the worst example, you would never want anybody to be led by him. Tell us what's the evidence that was a bad leader. And you have only seven minutes, so it's not a debate. Just record what people are saying, come back and repeat it to us. And that way, everybody who participated in training us. We're 38. Please continue to go into room. Okay. Thank you. That's a very, very good. I wish we had the time. Because those are all good ideas. Even if I stop this lecture here, three things have come out from what I've listened. Number one, it doesn't sound like competence is far from character. Because everybody who is said to have done good, when you ask for evidence, you refer to his character. Whoever you, whichever person was mentioned, it was always the kind of a person he was. Telling you then, my friends. I go on. Which therefore means, if you actually do want to bring transformation, one essential uh, requirement for a transformational leader is his character. And I, I wanted to talk about the uh, examples, but your examples are far much better than 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 the ones I'm going to I was going to Lee to talk about and therefore I don't think I'll go to them. Remember when you talk about character, we are talking about a person of good character does the same thing in darkness as in the light. When you discover the person in a in an area where he did not expect you, how he behaves will tell you the character. All of us have the ability of doing drama. You can you can become you can become um, the king in a Shakespeare play. We all know how to do drama. But over time, in, in darkness, you really become who you really are. A man of good character is a man who is good, irrespective of the circumstances. Remember, people to trust you, they don't trust you because you give them money. They trust you because... Of character. I want to quote Fredman. People of genius <laughs> are admired. They are not trusted, they are admired. If you are a very bright guy, we admire you. People of wealth are envied. Wow! I wish I had the money like that. People of power, you have given the example of a butcher, are feared. But only people of character are trusted. So if trust is so critical in getting a group from the area of comfort to a different one, through a very costly experience for the whole team, they would have to trust you. 
for that to happen. You know, character is the inherent complex of attributes that determine a person's moral values. In other words, for you to have good character, your core values need to be good core values because we normally act on the basis of our values. That's why the book of James, if you're a Christian, says faith without work is actually not faith. I can know your faith simply by your behavior because behavior is driven by your core values. So if, for example, you say you trust God, then I see you stealing. I know the truth. You don't have faith in God. You don't think God can give you what you need. No wonder you are stealing because you know God, he has a problem. He can't help me. Faith without works is dead means that your values are the ones that will come out, especially in the darkness. You know the word character in Greek refers to an engraving instrument. The formation of our character is forged as one of many distinctive marks that disdain a portrait of who we really are. Every time you make a decision, <laughs> you are made an impression. It's part of your character. Every time you respond to a need or defensively react to a crisis, not me, it's not me. Simply by the way you react, you are cutting a groove on what your character is. Every time you positively influence or manipulate others, you mold a shape. Every time you show gratitude or bribe people, you form an image. And sometimes you are not even aware. I worked for Shell for many years before they called me an old man and retired. And for a number of years, I was in charge of logistics for Shell for about 10 countries of Eastern Africa. And I was surprised the other day, all of us are in retirement, uh, talking to one of the CEOs and telling, hey, I just bumped into so-and-so who is a Muslim. And he told me, of all the years he has worked in transporting petroleum products, he can never forget you. I said, why? Because they tried all they could to bribe me and were totally unable. But that's not the only point. They discovered not only will I not accept his bribe, I will not take any bribe whatsoever. And yet, most people who refuse bribes end up persecuting the, the people. He says, I treated every contractor the same way. Now, unfortunately, both the person who was talking and the, and the contractor have since then died. But these are many years later, so it has nothing to do with, he is not trying to create a name for me. They didn't even know where they, they will find me. It means that if you truly want to get people, and I took a lot of effort to try to transform, to transform the, the way Shell worked in Eastern Africa, create new standards, reduce, reduce, um, uh, reduce accidents. It required a lot of effort to move the contractors to agree to do things in a way that to reduce accidents and create efficiency and effectiveness. It required them to trust me. And I'm glad in retirement they can refer to that, to that case. Every time you speak the truth, or every time you give what you call a white lie, as if lies have colors, you are cutting the pattern of your character. Every time you stand up to peer pressure, or give in to temptation, you are carrying your character. And you know some of these things are not easy. I still remember one time a contractor was so unhappy with me, he actually came to my office with a gun. Placed it on the, on the table because he didn't like the way I, I had insisted on him doing certain things. And then he went to his pocket and produced, produced um, uh, an ID to show me that he is actually a police reserve, reservist. These are policemen. Business, they are doing their normal work, but they are in secret. They are policemen. So he produced it. And I could see he has a photograph and he is a senior superintendent of police telling me, I'll kill you, and there'll be no case. And I depended in fear. Of course, I didn't want to die. It depended on whether I would give in or not. And I realized, as a Christian, that option did not exist. You cannot compromise your standards 
because you fear to die. That's why if any nation is going to be transformed, it will be by Christians, because Christians know if you die, you go to heaven. So I just told, told the guy exactly that. It's okay to die for a good reason. And I didn't, I didn't do anything, change anything about my decision on, the, on his contract. Now it's, so by the time you hear in retirement, they are talking about it. It's because I refuse to compromise. He at the face of death. So it's important to understand that if we are going to get Nigeria to change, we must be ready to die. And I'm not talking about, about dying as a, just a joke. Some people will actually die. And it's the death of one person that will give courage to the others. And then out of that, everybody will know these people mean business. And you'll see that, that particular state starting to change. Because now people did not, do not want to kill. So they realize you can never change. They will have to toe the line. Now it's important to understand that's what character is. Character is the ability to stand your ground even, at the, even if it is going to risk your own death. As with character, even the best artist has an errant stroke, I agree. But you must learn to accept your failure. Good people of good character apologize. They admit. And they have integrity. They have pure motives. They are credible. They actually act right as, as a habit. And they are able to answer the question. If they are given a choice between a good name and riches, what will they go for? Why? I would like you to share, to share that in the chat box. It's because we don't have enough time to go into groups. Just share. Be honest. A good name is better than riches. True or false? Explain. Remember, when you talk about a good name, it may lead you to poverty for the rest of your life. The guys who don't, have, who don't care about a good name are doing deals. And they are becoming millionaire in dollar terms, not Naira, but in dollar terms. Now, you insist on being strict because you want a good name. You might lose money. So which one do you go for? Because what you go for can tell us whether you'll be a transformational leader or not. Please give your reasons. Please read, read for us. Tell me if you don't mind, read for us the answers. Okay, many of them are saying true, it's true. Um, we want to hear the evidence. Uh, I, can touch. <laughs> I feel, um, just a second. Just why, do they, why do they say a good name is better than riches? A good name will outlive a person to generations of home. That's yeah. Agbo. Okay. Um, a good name because I believe a good name lasts for generations. That's what Jerry did. True, a good name is better than riches. I'd rather do the right for material gains. Uh, that is George. Um, Timmy says, true, always uh, for respect, I think. Kelechi says, a good name is better, but money answers all things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you, if you have a good name, you have many questions unanswered. <laughs> yeah. So... Adama says, true, good name builds your external legacy, which your generations to come will benefit from. And Yero says, your good name will stand you out. Um, Great says, a good name is better than riches because an honorable name is better than adding honorable in quotes to your name. Now, just just um, just read the last one. Okay, Oluwayomi says, true, a good name would attract more than riches can. So that's the last one. So most of them are true. They agree that um, a good name is better than riches for, for different reasons. David in the Bible said, David in the Bible says, he has been young, now he is old. He has never seen the children of the righteous begging bread. They may not become rich. But if you have a good name, and for example, you have a medical problem, chances are the, the neighbors would... We will collect money to get you through to hospital. 
So you may not be rich yourself, but once you have a good name, everybody won't. But then people don't want that. They want the money. They want independence. Now, we've run out of time, but I would have wanted to spend a bit of time talking about how do we become who we become? And I'm saying part of it is from nature. We watch how nature is. And so when we talk about a person being a good person, is a person who follows the order of nature. If, you start, if a man starts behaving like a woman, we say it out of order. We therefore say he's not a good character. And we also think of somebody, be, uh, when we see something beautiful, is in order. And then we can go on and on and on. Um, the other thing is, when you talk about somebody having a good character, it's because he keeps his conscience. He does not overrun his conscience. He obeys it. And um, number three, we say your character is also born by the kind of culture you grow in. That's why we need to bring up our children around the Bible. Because, because depending on your behavior and the culture of where somebody is growing, they will be influenced in the kind of character they become. Number four is religion. If you're in a religion that says it's okay to kill, you'll find it much easier to kill. If you're in a religion that says it's okay to steal, except don't steal from your, from your, from your relatives, you'll find it very easy to do it. So religion can influence the kind of character you have. And of course now, all of us are suffering from globalization. What happened in one corner of the world, soon enough will be in your village over the television set. Sometimes also your character will be influenced by law and order. What does the government require? You find somebody who always drives at reasonable speeds. But it all came from the fact that there is a law and it is enforced on speed limit. When you want to talk about developing somebody's character, what we call the ABC of human motivation, A for achieve, A B for belonging and C for control. That a lot of people, their character has been has become from a desire to be an achiever. And sometimes we are so desperate to, to, to be a success that we start associating ourselves with things that are not quite right. They're not the way we were brought up. But our drive to be a success can change our character negatively. But sometimes it's just the crowd we keep. B is for belonging. I want to be regarded as a politician. So I'll bribe my way into politics because I believe to be regarded as a politician, a governor or something, is something I look for. So sometimes it's not even the question of um, or success. It's a question of am I part of the club? But sometimes under C is control, power. I just want to, to, con to have power. And in order to get that power, I'll compromise my standards. And we could go on. But let me, as I go towards the end, tell you, good character is God-likeness. In other words, if you really want to be, have good character, we normally say, if somebody like God, we say, that guy has good character. And we know that God for example, has compassion. So if you are a man of compassion, people will trust you. If you're a man of courage, people will trust you because they know you cannot give up along the way and we can go on and on. Good character, number two, is other said than this. We normally say a person who, does, who is not selfish, and that came out on the list, if you are the person who only thinks about yourself and your family, we don't regard you as a man of good character. A person of good character sacrifices his personal or family uh, comfort in order to be helpful to people who have need. So we call them selfless, sacrificial, you know, service-oriented. Then we say you have good character. So characteristics of lead leadership goodness is you really, if you are really going to have good character, and we have, which we had enough time because each of this is a subject of your own. You need inner security. A sense of security that causes you to say, I'll do it. What can they do to me? Like the Bible talks about, what can man do to me? A sense of inner security. If you are not sure of yourself, 
your character will be affected. You're always wondering, what are people thinking about me? If you have ever had an insecure boss, you know how much you suffered. You do well, they think you're after his job. You do badly, they think you want him to, you, you want to, you, you want him to fail as a head of department. Inner security, feeling like I'm okay, I believe God will be with me, will give you the courage to stand by your, your values. But also vulnerability, willingness to take risks, becoming vulnerable, will make people come close to you. You don't keep them at arm's length, and in the process they trust you. Approachability, transparency, truthfulness. And we can go on and on. When we look at the characters of leadership goodness, it becomes obvious that the, the statement, good leadership comes from good people, is true. You cannot be a person who is a good leader if you are not a good person. Good leadership comes from good people. The foundation of, for leadership development should be the development of people of good, dependable, and strong character. Once you have character, and clarity of vision, you take the group. People trust you enough to take them where you are going. Number two, even those who oppose you will try to create a story about you. People say that must be a lie. That cannot be said of Nganga. That can't be true. People themselves will defend you. You will discover your project will succeed. But you, it's not because you say you are good. You have, must have a track record of good character, so that people will defend you when they try to try to solve your name. And that will make your project succeed. That will give you the ability to take the group to the desired end. But let me tell you something. This character thing is not permanent and pensionable. <laughs> you can lose it. How? The moment all of a sudden you say, I'm getting old, and haven't really achieved much, I'll, I'll die a poor person, what will I do for my children? All of a sudden you stand from other-centeredness to self-centeredness. And you can find somebody who in earlier years had good character, losing it. But number two is maybe social pressure. People tell you, wait a minute, like when I neared retirement, they start saying, eh, what do you think you'll live on in retirement? And social pressure can get you to, to compromise. But sometimes there's culture and traditions. This is the way we do it in the village I come from. Even the law of competition. You are competing. You, you, I keep telling people, people of good character, do not compete with others. They compete with themselves. You want to be better and better continuously. If somebody else is better than you, it doesn't bother you. You know the gifts God has given you. And you continuously become better, con progressively better. And as long as you are doing your best, you are becoming better over time. It doesn't matter whether others are better than you. You don't compete with other people. And we could go on. So, my final su subject. How can you change? Now, once, from what I've been saying, if you know now you are not somebody of good character, how can you change? We have said... The solution lies in your core values. Understanding yourself. So the first step on the journey to changing your character so that you are a man of good character who can be trusted is self-awareness. A lot of us don't admit. Um, the Johari window talks about a part of you that other people know and you don't. When you have self-awareness, it means you allow other people to be honest with you then you know something about yourself and you admit. Not always on the defensive. You can never become a better person if you are not self-aware, understanding your weaknesses and your strength. Once you are self-aware, you will know your weaknesses and strength. You will know where your character has a flow. That will take you to the second step up the ladder of character building. This is clarify the current understanding of character shaping concept. What is it in your, in, your, in, your, in your belief system that causes you to act out of line? For example, you don't have respect for women. You're a man and you have no respect for women. That means you are not a person of good character because women fear you 
and yet you are leading men and women. So they can't trust you. So start asking yourself after you are self-aware. You are the second step you say, what is in my belief system makes me want to misuse women or to be rude to women or to have sex with women who are not my spouse? You discover that there is something in your background that made it a belief system. Maybe your grandfather told you, women are for use. I, get, I got 10 wives. And so from then on, as you read, the women are like chattels. They can be bought. And that will give you bad character. But and, and if you clarify the current understanding that makes you feel it's okay. Ah, I know I was rude to a woman, but she's only a woman. Maybe I picked a, a wrong example, but uh, for sure, sexual harassment. There is a law in Kenya that talks about sexual harassment. You cannot be prosecuted. Women came up with a law and it was passed by parliament. But of course, we give the impression that the harasser is uh, always a man. No, sometimes women who sexually harass people. You, if you have that character, nobody will trust you. It will bring your whole leadership down and you'll never bring transformation. So find out why are you like that? And if you discover the concept, the value, the understanding that makes you feel like it's okay to do the wrong thing, you are on the journey to improvement. So you now can go to step number three. Determine the right understanding of the concept. Is it true that women are not as important as men? Do you really believe it? And you start realizing, although that's the way I was brought up, to be honest, God created men and women. God expects me to love them. God expects me to love, to respect them. So when I do not respect a woman, the woman might not do anything. I'm the power. I'm the leader. I'm the leader. I'm the boss. But God will hold me accountable. The right understanding of the place as women is of people of value whom God will hold me accountable for the way I treated them. You can see under step number three, you are starting to say, yes, my problem is not... Because behavior alone is not enough. In the self-awareness, you know the wrong behavior you are, you are having. Step two, you have clarified... It's a belief system within you that makes it okay. In step three, you determine the right understanding of the concept. What should be, what should, what view should I have? Under step number four, now that you can see, you know, you can see clearly your understanding should not be the way it is. You are acting, you are acting wrongly according to the correct understanding. So you engage truth with the existing understanding. Every time you, you see a woman, you remember your, your, what your basic understanding is. Then you remember what the right understanding is. So you know very well you have a choice to make under number four. There must be an interaction, my bad understanding that leads to bad behavior and the right understanding that could lead me to right behavior. Then under number five, you will tell yourself, I will no longer be acting out of line. I align Actions to right understanding of the concept. In other words, my belief, my core values, I'm changing them. And from now onwards, although it is much easier to act the way I've always acted, I'm now going to act differently because I know that going that route is not right. Now, under number five, it may take quite some time. If they say, okay, you have to do the same thing for over 21 days, for three weeks, for you to become a part of you. So at the number five, you keep aligning, you fail, you align again, you fail, you align again until it becomes your new way of doing things. At the number six, and you now can act with confidence when you are dealing with women or whatever your behavioral flow is. And number seven, depend on God for the power to change. You, all this is a process that brings transformation. Here, you are transforming yourself. Once you yourself are transformed, it will be easier to transform your group. And um, my time, I had one hour, and it is up. Um, so I may have, have to... A few more, you have a few more minutes. How many minutes? You have, have about seven minutes. To move. Seven? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. So uh, I'm right to be, I'm trying to uh, conclude. You can see the picture you have there. Existing conceptual understanding, the truthful understanding, then you become more truthful in conceptual understanding in the balance. And we could go on. So let me, as I conclude, talk about some of the wrong concepts and behavior for in Africa that needs to change. Negative self-image. If a, if a white man came to your village and started selling bicycles, all the villagers will move from buying from the usual shop to the white man's shop because somehow they feel the white man must be having a better bicycle. That is something we need to fight. Negative self-image. We must have positive self-image of ourselves. And so you need this transformational process. That's why you need character. You know, to help people to move from one to the other. Limited supply mindset. To evidence my mindset. Supply my, limited supply mindset is the one that makes us corrupt. Because we feel like if there are 10, 10 bananas, or there are only 10 and we are, we, are, we, are, we are 11, I'll miss. There's a problem of dependence instead of interdependence. Where we feel like Getting free things is a thing to go. And you are wise if you get free things. That's how you become corrupt. And you don't have a problem with it. Because after all, you, you, you are clever. You are able to use public money. And um, so you are clever, which is dependence. And we could go on. Discrimination, partiality, favoritism, all those are wrong behaviors that we need to, to deal with. I would have talked about Mother Teresa and the example she was, or even Martin Luther King. Um, Please go ahead. Just do it. Yeah. Sorry? Please go ahead. Okay. So, I'm leaving you with an assignment. But before I give you the assignment, I want to share some quotes. Your actions speak so loud that cannot hear what you are saying. Chinese proverb. Your character, like we said, is like an engraving. You can keep saying wonderful things, but people do not go by what you say. They go by what you do. Then Paul of Tassa said, bad company corrupts good character. And that has not changed. Then an unknown monk said, when I was a young man, I want to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world. So I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my own town, on my town. I couldn't change the town. And as an older man, I tried to change my family. Now, as an old man, I realized that the only thing I can change is myself, not even my family. And suddenly, I realized that if long ago, I had changed myself. I then could have made an impact on my family. My family and I then could have made an impact on our town. Their impact could have changed the nation and I could indeed have changed the world. That's what each one of us in this meeting needs to take. So I hope you will do this exercise. Uh, my notes are going to be sent to you. So even if I run out of time, you can see. But I'm saying, look at your own life. It's, a, it's something personal. We want to talk about transformation of self. Identify a conceptual misunderstanding that currently impedes your effectiveness in your personal, relational, or professional life. Determine what people, events, or information shaped your current understanding of the identified concept. And then exactly the the six steps we took is your assignment and write it and give it to the give it to uh, to the MC she will see what she can do with it but, uh, but it's important that we don't just talk as a way of putting these ideas to our mind let's do the exercise and write a two page a two page uh, uh, report on what needs to change and what you are going to do to change in your life back to the MC thank you very much for the time Thank you.
very much, Mr. John. That was extremely exciting and uh, thought-provoking. We have many, many um, questions and responses in the chat box. Um, but now we'll just have a, um, uh, and we have many hands raised as well. So, um, Mr. John, we'll just take some questions. We'll take, um, maybe we should do two at a time. And um, yes, and um, you can answer two at once. So, I would allow them to unmute and ask their questions. Then you answer, then we'll continue in that way. So, right now we have seven um, hands, and I'll just go um, step uh, one after the other. So, Mr. Abdul, please um, unmute and ask your question. Thank you, Temi, and thank you, Mr. Nganga, for the wonderful presentation and, and enlightenment. So, um, we've gone through your lecture, and obviously we have learned a lot, and uh, you see what moved me most was the principle and process of character formation. So, uh, we have learned a lot there. However, I think, um, um, I think there's something that we can add to, to. Like for instance, at the first step of self-awareness, and then next step of clarifying your understanding, and then determining the right understanding, and then engaging truth with the right understanding. So you see, normally, if you have some people, or maybe, let me use myself as an example, I may be on a wrong understanding, and it could be difficult for me to identify the right understanding to the fullest potential. So you see, it could me, do me a lot of good if I identify someone whom I believe in his ways, in his principles, in his discipline, in his culture, to, I, to adopt him, as, him or her as a mentor. So my focal point is that mentorship and tutelage could do a lot of good in character formulation or formation or what should we thank you very much. I'm hundred percent I'm 100% in agreement with you but make sure it is the choice is yours do not take a mentor who is directive directional instructional take a, a mentor who advises so the final decision is by you thank you very much thank you so, um, Sawi, please unmute and ask a question. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. John. I really appreciated your lecture. Um, however, my question is a little nuanced. So, um, the values of a society or the values of a people um, is is usually. A point in time it is the thing that they're the things that the people hold dear the things that the people respond to in the african and this is something that is common across africa the fact that it, uh, your lecture is great talking about you know good people and good characteristics and good strong character i understand strength but when we talk about good people it is not something that actually, especially in Nigeria, for instance, and if we want to be honest this an adult conversation here it's not something that actually rings true with the Nigerian people. We see it in the kind of leaders that we, we elect. We see it in the kind of people that we, that we emote towards. We see it in the kind of people that we, that we name as mentors and the kind of people that we see as, quote unquote, strong men, the people we want to be like. It's about money, it's about strength of character, it's about the most bullish person in the room, the person with the loudest voice. So those sort of things are the things that, that connect with our people. So when we say, okay, good people, I get it. But then I feel like that in itself limits people. It limits us in our abilities to actually go far because we, we do not take into consideration the fact that there are other people who do not have those same kind of views and values. And they have understood what our people pay attention to and what our people relate with better. That is why you can have a situation where you have a man who is known for stealing, who is known for for um, for taking ownership, for for taking on resources that belong to the people, taking them on as himself, still having millions and millions of people as fans, millions and millions of people as supporters. We you can even have supporters of those same people in this same room. So my thought is, 
<laughs> that is it necessarily is it, is it is it wise to I, I can understand us having good as a, as a backdrop but then understanding that the, the values in your society also have to be taken into consideration because those are the things that will push you forward when Nigeria, I, I, for instance, is, a, is far away from the from the position of a Germany, for instance, where people will look at an Angela Merkel and say, "Oh, this is a person who is somebody that we'd like to look up to." In Nigeria, we would look up to somebody who has money. I agree so, with you. Kenya is not different, my sister. Okay. Kenya is not different. Now, but that means maybe I did not emphasize enough. I said, "Good character is other certainness is godlikeness." In other words, good character is not following the culture of Nigeria. It therefore means a man of good character will swim against the current. They are going to do things that uh, the, 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 the people around them wouldn't call good. Because they have already decided what is good. But you are not going by the cultural understanding who is good. You yourself have understood that to be a good person means other centeredness, other godlikeness, and you know that your culture does not support that. Now, what this group is being called upon is to get people who are used to what you have just described to change and start electing people who are different. It will require you of a period of time to gain the influence, to gain the character that will cause people to, to trust you. Trust you enough such that they will get the money from somebody else, but they feel the right person to lead us is this one. And even if it's going to take the next hundred years, the important thing is you don't give up. You would continue with it. And the first thing is deal with yourself. Then with yourself, live this life of other centeredness. Against the majority of the people behaving different. But they say that if you have 20% of the people move in a good direction, 80% will easily follow them. The critical thing is, will you get the 20% critical mass to change the culture of Nigeria? So maybe I didn't say it as clearly. I do understand the biggest challenge for good people is they're in the minority and they are not accepted and nobody bothers with them. They do not, people generally speaking don't look for a good name they look for wealth. So I hope I'm clear, I'm understanding you, but what I may not agree is to imagine it is impossible. Start somewhere and you'll see yourself slowly move the community to the right understanding, despite years and years of community behaving in a certain way. That's what William Wilberforce did. Life in Britain revolved around slaves, what in Africa we call uh, house girls. We have people employing the house to help us. If you are to, to declare a law in Nigeria that does not um, allow professional women to employ house girls, you can imagine that will be going totally against the grain. That's what William Bozir did. He took the whole of his lifetime, but finally before he died, slave trade was abolished, and from then onwards, in the British Empire, it was illegal to own slaves and to trade in slaves. But it was exactly what you have described. A Briton or bishops and Christians, everybody had a slave. And they did not see what he was talking about. Now, if Wilberforce did it, he's our example. There are many others in Africa who need to be a Wilberforce that will change an accepted culture that is not good to the better culture of godlikeness and other centeredness. I hope I'm clear. Thank you very much. We have just two, we have about two minutes, just two quick hands up. Um, was a tempo, then Dapo, in quick succession. Please make your questions very quick and straight to the point. Thank you. Was a tempo, please. Okay, thank you. Thank please, you so much. Dapo. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So uh, my question is quick. Um, what's uh, what would be a quick balance? What uh, type of balance would you give between good name 
and um, riches or be the balance because most of the time we see people in a bit to preserve um, what they call a good name. Um, they forgo the idea of actually looking to make and perpetuate wealth. So what would be your advice as to keeping a good balance of it? Thank you. That's an easy one. Simply aim at a good name. And a good name, we have said, means diligence, hard work, excellence, and money will follow. So, we are not suggesting that you, you pursue poverty. We are saying, pursue money, but not as experience of character. So, a good name is better than riches, means the only riches you accept are riches you can get with good character. So, there is not a competition. You, you are clear. What matters is good character, which means hard work, which means doing the right thing, and then money will follow you. And like I said, David says, I was young, now I'm old, I have never seen the righteous, the children of the righteous, begging bread. The last one. Um, I think I'll call quickly. All right. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Good evening. So far, um, so you speak a lot about character. Um, now there are some uh, some some thinkers that would argue that being good is not really a choice if you lack the capacity to be to be other than good. In the sense that if you don't have the strength or the character to inflict some kind of damage against your opponent, then your choice not to inflict any damage. Is not really a choice. It comes from the absence of capacity. Do you get what I'm saying? And if you even look at it from a scriptural point of view, you will see that if being godlike was our aspiration, then we need to have the capacity to deal with the, 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 the evil members of society with as much brashness as God dealt with, say, for example, during the great flood or the enemies of David and such, you know, what would you say about that? Should we have or retain the capacity to inflict upon our opponents uh, damage? Now, you know, somebody has already said, you might not be able to pull yourself by your own bootstraps. You can go to a mentor. Before this session, I was listening to a reformed robber in Kenya and giving his story about how he reformed. We Christians believe that if you accept your inability, God is able to help you in the new life. So you are right. Unless you get help, you may continue doing the same thing and feel helpless. But the most important thing is the first step. Self-awareness will cause you to know that you are helpless. That's what you tend to do. That will push you, unless you are suicidal, it will push you to look for help. And that will improve what you are calling capacity. And actually you will change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mr. John. I'm, not, I'm very mindful of time. I'm going to, to, to 9 o'clock right now. So um, whoever wants to ask any more questions, I'm sorry, we can't take any questions now. Um, so the poll will basically be... Um, on uh, Mr. John's um, session. What I'd like to thank Mr. John um, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for coming today. Um, as you know, he's from Kenya, and we just want to thank you for coming. Thank you for um, taking the time out to um, speak with us, have the session with us today. We have learned a lot, um, good character, how to have good character, and to go against the grain. Um, and to be radical with, with a, to be do all well with the consciousness of um, holding um, character high in our um, integrity uh, in our list of, um, of uh, behavior. So um, thank you very much, Mr. John, and we hope to see you soon. Um, CEO um, CEO is here. Do you want to say anything, um, CEO? I just wanted to <coughs> thank our guests. I want to thank you from the depth of my heart. Uh, it was such a pleasure to listen to you, sir. Your words of wisdom, your experience, everything was just shining through. And I wish you had more time. So the decision I'm taking uh, for the team is that next time we are giving you the full time. You will get a day 
at least a day to yourself. But when I say a day, sorry, uh, a session to yourself, because you had a lot that you wanted to say. And although you'll be sharing the um, slides, it's not the same as, as um, you talking through them. So thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. We honor you. And we really want to say that we had a wonderful time and we look forward to welcoming you again and again. Thank you. Yes, it truly was an inspirational session. Nancy, I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hear that there's, there's a question. We've run out of time. We try to respect time. Whoever put something on about separating nation building from politics, um, if you can send me a, uh, uh, an email through SNO, 